with us now to talk more about all of this is Evie Paporis, a former Secret Service special agent and MSNBC law enforcement analyst. Evie, what questions are going through your mind this morning as we look at how this unfolded? I think if you're looking specifically to how the shooter got there, you're going to want to look at that outer perimeter. It sounds like it's deja vu all over again, right? Mm -hmm. The Trump rally. What's the outer perimeter look like? Look, from what we know, it's about 300 to 500 yards. That is quite a distance. But if you have a long weapon like a rifle, that drastically closes that distance. So you want to know what kind of assets that they have. Typically, it's going to be local law enforcement authorities. One of the questions I would pose is, were there any vehicles around there patrolling? Did you have uniforms around there keeping an eye on that outer perimeter? Because we do know that the shooter was able to actually get in his vehicle, drive away, and it was because a witness was able to get his license plate and make a model of the vehicle and share that with police that they later caught, caught him. I think it's something like 40 minutes uh, on the highway 40 later. miles north on I-95. 40 miles no north. Thank you. So those things kind of... What would have happened if a witness wasn't there? Would we, would we still be looking for this individual? So when you're looking at protection now, I think it's going to be really all hands on deck, especially for former candidates. This is kind of, I don't want to say strike two, but it's the second attempt. In essence, the Secret Service did their job on this one. They were able to intercept the shooter. He was, it, it looks like he was getting set up from what we can tell with that photo. He had his GoPro out. It, it's interesting. He also had the GoPro facing him. So it could capture the footage of him shooting, it looked like, so that he could have that mm. as well. So putting kind of all those elements together. But it seems that they did stop it. They did interrupt it before President Trump was actually in that area. I think had the agent not seen it in advance, that leapfrog agent, we might be having a very different conversation. Totally. And, Evie, you bring up such important points. And, yes, it was about... 40 miles north of right here, where they finally apprehended the suspect. About 45 minutes uh, after this incident began is when they were able to get him. And it is key that someone saw him getting into the car. And what we're told is that apparently this person, this good Samaritan, actually took down the information on the car, may have taken a, a photo of the plate. But that changed everything, no doubt. But, but Evie, I'm just wondering, is there a difference between protection levels between a, a sitting president, a former president, a, a presidential candidate? Yes, there are. When you're a current president, you get everything. And when I say everything, they give you everything. But it costs money and a lot of money. When you become a former president, the threat level changes. You have to think of it. You're out of office. People lose interest in you. Unless you're somebody who's really out there campaign, you know, on the trail, campaigning with others. I remember when I first started, I started when the transition happened between Clinton and Bush. And when Clinton left office, I mean, he was still going out there. People still loved him. He was going into large crowds. And I would have those moments where I would think, oh, my goodness, where is he going? And you had a different amount of assets and resources for that. The unique part with Trump is he is running for office again. And this is, he's already had an assassination attempt. We're almost like two, two months to the couple of days here. And so we, we see something different. I also, one of the issues we're looking at and what we're hearing is more threats are coming in, not just to him, but to other protectees. You have to sift through those threats. The problem when you get these threats is what's real, what's junk? So you have to sit and go through them. And now that's going to be even more man intensive because you're going to worry, am I going to miss something? What's out there? There's a lot of work to be done. No doubt the Secret Service, they have their hands full. They know what they're doing. But I do think the game is changing. And they are really going to be leaning on local entities, authorities helping them to help put these things together and to mitigate. I know everyone's saying, oh, how did he get so close again? You can lock down all that space. I mean, you're looking at a lot of area to lock it down. Yeah. Lock it down. But everything costs time and money and resources. Sure. If a budget's not an issue, and I suspect at this point the Secret Service is going to say that, you know what, forget the budget. Let's just get through these next two months so that we can reorient ourselves and figure out how we want to proceed. And if we need more agents to physically be doing the protection and less local, then you can do that. I think it's important to note that since the first assassination attempt, we do know the Secret Service added personnel to Trump's detail. They also have implemented bulletproof glass around Donald Trump at his campaign events when he's outdoors. I'm just wondering what else could be done when it comes to his personal protection. We heard from Congressman Glenn Ivey just last hour the idea of 
maybe he shouldn't be allowed to golf on his properties through this part of the campaign, maybe like a military base, which we've seen other presidents do it when they were in office. Your thoughts? Look, I'm a former agent. I'm going to say don't go anywhere, especially outdoors. At this point, this is a second incident. And where did it happen again? Outdoors. Doors. Being outdoors just makes you more vulnerable. All it means is you've got so many variables that you're trying to control. The less variables I have to control, the more that I can ensure the person I'm protecting stays safe. They should really have heart-to-heart -heart conversations with his staff, talk to them, try to minimize his exposure. It's a golf course. You're out. You're in the open. Line of sight issues. Anywhere you have line of sight issues, it's a problem. How can you cover all of them? That's the issue. Now, is he going to listen? I would think he will try to accommodate to some degree. Most protectees, there you can talk to them. It's how much the Secret Service is willing to push. I can absolutely right now see them pushing a bit harder and saying, look, just for the next two months, can we please work together? And not just with him, the other protectees as well. Yep. Thank you so much, Abby Pomporis, with your expertise. It's so, so insightful to hear from you. Thank you.